Have you seen some of these goddamn churches lately? It's homeless people out here. Why ain't God letting them stay there? Why these niggas got gold ceilings and shit? Why God need gold ceilings to talk to me? Why do God need colored windows to talk to me? You see, South Africa is better than Nigeria. Them blacks are mistreating blacks in Nigeria. What's the reason? That's worse. Police beat people on the streets like dogs.
accompanied by in our bid to make a change, foster change in our community. A community plagued by violence, the violence constituted by a few unengaged youths. Nothing but sheer will. We went into our community seeking the change that we wanted to see in our community with nothing but sheer will, no resource, nothing but sheer will. We went and we did. You never amount to anything, everything you're doing is a waste of time. There will be nothing that will be brought forth from everything that you think to do or will do in this community. Some of the things that were said about our efforts towards asking for change, requiring it, doing the work necessary to bring it to life. Nothing, nothing no resource, nothing at all, only a desire, a willingness, dance is a weapon, dance is our weapon. Dance is a weapon. Dance is a, a weapon. weapon. Stand, don't we? Yeah. Good afternoon, Your Majesties. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, award recipients, friends, and honored guests, welcome to this year's award ceremony. The first we've been able to hold in the last three years. The last three years has seen humankind face a number of challenges that made it very difficult for us to connect, to share, to acknowledge, and even just to be amongst other humans. That makes this celebration all the more important because it brings us to a place where we can all be together again and honor the wonderful work of those uh, change makers that we'll be seeing tonight. Their work and engagement with their communities, just as our coming together in this international community of people who care about culture, are reminders that humanity is all we have. This is also my first official uh, award ceremony as a director of the fund, so I'm really quite excited and nervous at the same time. And, uh, and I got to meet the king <laughs> and the princess. So I've been giddy the, the past few uh, minutes in the back room there. But I have to say that those of you that haven't met me, my name is Marcus De Sando, and I hope to really acquaint myself with all of you after this. It is really such a pleasure and a privilege to be here, to be among all of you, people who understand how important culture is. For me, culture has been a lifeline, the red thread, as the Dutch would say, that has defined my life, first as an opera singer, then an opera director, an administrator, and now a director of a fund that supports cultural practitioners around the world. I've also had 
I also want to add that I'd rather feel quite humbled by the commitment to serve a, a culture the way that we do as a fund, as I believe that without culture, my own journey would not have been possible. So I wear the influence of culture very proudly daily, and I'm looking forward to continuing this great work with all of you here in this room. In my view, the Prince Klaus Fund has an ambitious goal, not only to present awards to creatives, socially engaged people around the world, but to help capacitate them, to connect them. A small fund can only hope to be a drop in the bucket, you might say, but we all know that enough drops can lead to a flood. We are counting on the positive changes, large and small, that cultural practitioners are making in all kinds of ways all around the world. Take, for instance, the dance that you've just seen here by Valu, who is a Prince Klaus Seed Awardee for 2021, based in Lagos, Nigeria, who uses movement to address social challenges. The connection with social issues, the interweaving of culture with community engagement is inspiring, and we see it in many disciplines around all our awardees that we've had in the past few years. We are here tonight, though, to honor six established individuals with this year's Prince Klaus Impact Awards, and by impact, we look for positive change and the change that comes from their efforts and how they use culture as a medium for change. You'll hear about them in their impressive work and have a chance to meet them shortly. We also have present in the audience laureates from 2020, 2020 who due to the pandemic weren't able to join uh, or to actually have a celebration here in Amsterdam. And so we are glad that they could join us today and we hope that their good work continues and we are glad to welcome them. All performances on stage tonight are by SEED Awards uh, recipients uh, who are also guided by Kensen On uh, as a mentor. And they are examples of the extraordinary talented and socially connected young creatives who are working to open up more space for cultural expression. Seed Awards offer them a boost at an early stage in their careers and connects them with a much larger network. The hope is that they become so successful and have long careers that, you know, one day they'd be the ones we celebrate here as Impact Awardees. But before I, I, we turn our attention to the stars of tonight's show, uh, the, art, the established artists receiving the awards, the Impact Awards, I would like to thank this year's Impact Award jury, the chair, uh, curator Pablo Leon de la Barra, architect, and 2019 laureate Miriam Kamara, dancer, choreographer, storyteller, and twin, 2007 laureate Faustin Linyakula, multimedia artist, and 2010 laureate Din Kule, and curator Maya El Khalil.
Art and culture have a unique way of connecting the world, even in the most trying of times. Every two years, the Prince Klaus Fund comes together to recognize six trailblazing artists with an outstanding dedication and engagement within their field. In their deliberations, the jury have chosen to honor individuals who have shown a clear commitment and engagement with their community. So we try to recognize the excellency in their work. That's a new way of thinking about working with community, a new way of thinking about working with the environment. The message in their work, the approach, the process they go through, it's something that can be duplicated and something that really has just incredible value for humanity, really. Each of the nominees are commended for their groundbreaking contribution to their practice. The Catalyst for Change, crafting an open and inclusive future. Most of them are operating in circumstances that are quite difficult, quite challenging, and sometimes even quite dangerous. Women and men out there are standing up every day, saying that there is still space for human dignity. There is still space for dreams in the middle of all this. I think it keeps the Prince Klaus Fund going and recognizing that the work that the fund does is important and is essential. No? That it goes beyond art market trends, uh, beyond art economies, to really recognize those that are making a difference. Mm-hmm. 
That was Atandi Wenjinga from South Africa, and she goes by the professional name Aram Amara Fleur. And yeah, I was mesmerized. Didn't know what to expect. It's amazing. I would like to now please invite uh, His Royal Highness Prince Contentine to come over to the stage, and we continue with the proceedings. We've got small directors. <laughs> what does the Prince Klaus Fund do? Why is culture so important? What's actually the value of art? How does it scale? Every year I get these generic questions about the Prince Klaus Fund. And every year I respond, don't ask me. Experience for yourself. See what powerful and amazing people receive our awards and the issues they are fighting for. Those we are honoring today respond to the climate emergency, imagining alternative futures, working to include un- and underrepresented communities, highlighting the urgent need for social justice, heritage conservation, freedom of expression, and more. All highly relevant topics. And then I'm typically asked, yeah, but how does it all add up? How are we actually making an impact? Isn't this just a drop in the ocean or a bucket? Uh, we didn't compare our notes before. So. Our awardees are working locally, close to people, where it really matters, and in the places where systems don't go. And yet their impact may actually be regional, or global, and the fund helps amplify this and make it visible. These questions about uh, the relevance of culture keep coming back. Even some of you may have them. So let me zoom out for a moment. As we celebrate here today, wars are raging in Ukraine and Yemen with the aim to oppress and negate local culture. Brave people are risking their lives in protest in places like Myanmar, Iran, and China, where they are fighting to defend their freedom, their culture, 
retain their identities, express themselves, be recognized and listened to. One of our award recipients today, Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara, is imprisoned in Cuba for his art and his battle for the freedom of expression. And, well, actually, let me stop here for one moment and just reflect on that, uh, that we sit in this room acknowledging what these people are doing in the rest of the world and the circumstances that they are um, living under. The people that we support are not fighting with weapons, but with creativity and imagination. They are at the forefront of a global struggle to defend open democratic societies, to ensure that our fundamental freedoms are respected, and to pass this on to a next generation. If we really cherish the rule of law and fundamental rights, we cannot take this lightly. We've got to stand together and to defend the people's right across the globe to express and develop themselves. These rights need to be lived. Children across the world need to experience them and come to cherish them so that they will also defend them and in time will also stand up against oppression, hate, intolerance and xenophobia. Our deepest desire is to be happy to be heard, to be acknowledged for who we really are, to be safe and live a life in freedom. For many here, this vision seems obvious, but it isn't. It needs to be reimagined time and time again. Each generation must sharpen it, give it new words, compose music and imagery for it, express and celebrate it. This conquest starts small, person by person, house by house, school by school, neighborhood by neighborhood. Respect is built bottom up. Culture is lived every day. It's a basic need that is in us. It is who we are, not something abstract to be admired or vilified. So the questions that I mentioned at the start they reflect a worldview in which valuable seems interchangeable with quantifiable, especially in economic terms. Culture is seen as a luxury, an idle pastime. In this view, each intervention is only relevant as it's rolled out in scale. There where the human dimension is lost. And how does this worldview tally with our deepest desire to be happy. This cynicism fails to see that culture is the weapon to fight authoritarianism, which is why cultural actors and activists are among the first to suffer. In their vulnerability lies their power. They hold the key to a better world, a mirror to expose injustice, a different voice to express humanity. The culture that the Prince Klaus Fund supports is the voice of people, not of systems. It speaks to intuition and the heart more than just reason and machinations of power. When people cannot dress how they like, listen to music they want, read books that inspire, interact on the social media channels that of their choice, they will eventually rise up. And the fund supports young as well as experienced artists who are the catalyst for change. To give them the strength to persist, be creative, take risks, be challenging and help imagining other worlds. We are committed to feeding their drive, to supporting their resilience in cre of creative individuals, especially in places where independent thinking and creating art are dangerous and difficult. Today is the first time we are presenting the Impact Awards to six outstanding cultural practitioners who have demonstrated extraordinary resilience and made significant achievements in their own fields. You represent a range of disciplines and contexts 
from architecture and filmmaking to visual arts, performance, poetry, and philosophy. You addressed different issues and encountered different obstacles, often including economic disparities, deep-rooted cultural assumptions, prejudice, and social stigma. Neither of you have chosen an, er an easy path. You've had to overcome resistance to your efforts, and even worse. We and future generations are indebted to you as your insistence and resilience ensure that the path to a better world is not yet overgrown, that there is light that can inspire us to do more and better. It therefore is my great honor to present to you the six Prince Klaus Impact Awardees of 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Lysia Schreimacher, who is the Dutch Man Minister for Foreign Trade and Development Corporation, wanted to be here today, but unfortunately she had conflicting appointments. Luckily, technology saved the day, and, uh, we, uh, and she sent us a video or a message video that we will play for you now. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, since 1997, the Prince Klaus Awards have been highlighting the importance of culture for development. Because, as Prince Klaus himself used to say, people derive their identity and their dignity from culture. In his eyes, this made culture just as important for developing societies as infrastructure, education, or the economy. And as Dutch Minister for Foreign Trade and Development Cooperation, I couldn't agree more. The artists, activists, and thinkers we're celebrating today don't just influence the communities they live in, their work is relevant to us all. Because freedom of expression is relevant to all of us. It's a basic human right, and we should cherish it, nurture it, and fight for it wherever we are in the world. Because where freedom of expression is restricted, our very humanity is restricted. Today we honor the first ever recipients of the Prince Klaus Impact Awards. Six remarkable individuals who've devoted their lives to promoting political and environmental issues, human rights and the freedom to be yourself. We owe you a debt of gratitude for your courage, your compassion and your engagement. Your art gives a voice to those who have none. And the power of your creativity lies in its ability to give us hope and show us a way forward. I want to congratulate you all on winning this award. And I sincerely hope you'll continue to inspire us for many years to come. Have a great evening together.
that girl can run the world. We got that mind and soul. Ooh. I know that girl can run the world. We got that mind and soul. Fucking chicken the gas. Been not good this so long. Let's love each other. Oh, why in the world, Papa? Bunko yene chikenam. Let's love each other. Oh, why in the world, Papa? Bunko yene chikenam. Let's love each other. Oh, why in the world, Papa? Bunko yene chikenam. Let's love each other. Oh, why in the world, Papa? Well, <laughs> Bunda bye bye la, why you chubu do mana am? Bunda bye bye la, why you chubu do mana am? Luwa yene ulpo pam bum ko yene chicken am. Luwa yene ulpo pam bum ko yene chicken am. Luwa yene ulpo pam bum ko yene chicken am. Luwa yene ulpo pam bum ko yene chicken am. Chicken, 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 
Chicken, dugu, chicken, chicken, no quite a bird, I'm on the dugu, chicken, and I'm on the dugu, chicken, chicken, no quite a bird, I'm on the dugu, chicken, eh, dugu, chicken, chicken, no quite a bird, I'm on the dugu, chicken, one, two, three, four. May al Ibrashi, Egypt. I fell in love with Historic Cairo, which is one of the most exciting, challenging, and beautiful and ugly cities of the world. And I started to think about the relationship between cultural heritage and the communities that live around buildings of historical value. Connecting communities to their surroundings and heritage is not only a matter of importance to Egyptian architect May al Ibrashi, it's fundamental to creating stronger, resilient societies. We base our work on the respect of the built environment, of the people who live there, of its history, of the built environment as an environmental ecosystem, and we found that we can only think about the historic built environment through this diversity of disciplines. And so dealing with talented people every day and learning from them, and more importantly, learning from the communities and from the people who live around these uh, sites, this has been truly a privilege. Her work teaches local Egyptian communities that monuments are a resource, not a burden. And the preservation of heritage helps create ownership, encouraging them to become creators in their own city. Most importantly, we ground it in this idea of heritage as a resource that people can uh, benefit from. And through benefit, they acquire a sense of ownership. And through ownership, they become custodians of their heritage and true partners in preserving. Al Ibrashi's continuing work as an active community partner helps re signify monuments while using cultural heritage as a driver for progress. A key factor for changing society and creating urban development on the community's terms. Alain Gomis, Senegal. Mm. 
known for rich cinematic storytelling. Senegalese French director and screenwriter Alain Gomis isn't only defined by his work on the screen, but off it too. His ability to translate local social issues, such as themes of foreignness, the individual and the invisible, to international audiences via the big screen is reflected in his work at grassroots level. Je pense que l'un des moteurs, c'était aussi de faire des films, de montrer des visages, des gens, des, des histoires que je ne voyais pas au cinéma et qui étaient les gens qui m'entouraient, en fait. Que il faut que le cinéma, s'il prétend à l'universel, ben cet universel-là, il doit être fait de toutes ces différences. Quoi. Euh, ça ne peut pas être qu'un seul archétype euh, qui représenterait un peu tout le monde. Et tout ça m'a amené aussi, ça me paraît être la même démarche, à créer le Centre Yenenga. Gomez' work in training and connecting young African artists is encouraging a new generation to share their knowledge and experiences through the medium of film. de se découvrir à travers d'autres, de se transférer et de se découvrir soi-même vraiment profondément à travers d'autres. L'idée, ça reste de s'adresser à celui, aussi bien à celui qui est juste à côté qu'à celui qui est à, ou à celle qui est à l'autre bout de, de la planète. Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara, Cuba. En Cuba ahora mismo, artistas que simplemente por su forma de pensar, ahora mismo están en prisión. Creating work that has a tangible impact on Cuban freedom of expression is at the heart of what performance artist Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara does. Nada, lo que hago es utilizar la, la visualidad esta de, de las moradas tropicales, que es por sí es el, el gran símbolo, el gran ser símbolo de, de, de Cuba. Es como la mulata, eh, carnosa, con plumas y casi desnuda. Es como lo exótico, es como la visualidad esta del Caribe. Le tienen miedo al performance, le tienen miedo a la poesía, le tienen miedo a, a una canción, a una directa, le tienen miedo. ¿A qué le tienen miedo? Y sale este decreto 349 que toda la cultura cubana, todos los artistas, artistas tienen que tener permiso del Ministerio de Cultura. Si no tiene permiso del Ministerio de Cultura, simplemente desaparece. Básicamente 349 lo que hace es legitimar toda la censura. His accessible and honest performance art underlines his tireless pursuit against artistic censorship and political authority by transforming public spaces and creating shared experiences, displaying the true transformative power of art. Alcantara's activism and art has created a following from a younger generation of Cuban artists fighting for greater freedoms and his current incarceration has become a symbol of what they are fighting for. Siempre una experiencia de un secuestro por parte de la seguridad del Estado, del régimen cubano, siempre una experiencia muy particular y, y traumática. 
que uno sea fuerte no hace que, que uno sea fuerte y, y apuesta por el arte, por la libertad del arte, por la libertad del cubano todo. María Medrano, Argentina. For Maria Medrano, poetry and literature isn't just an art form. It's a powerful tool for creating opportunities and empowering the marginalized. Damos talleres de formación en artes, oficios y comunicación, tanto adentro de las cárceles como afuera. Yo fui danzante sobre destellos, epistolares y sonoros, deseando salir a la luz en primavera. Yo fui Vigía sin designio alguno, agotando lamentos interminables en risas de permanente sueño. Known for their exceptional community work within Argentina's penitentiary system, Medrano's charity, Yo No Fui, helps women and the LGBTQIA community re-enter society using arts and culture as the foundation of rehabilitation. Working directly with correctional officers, Medrano has challenged the penitentiary system, creating a discourse focused on changing the internal environment of prisons and helping those re-entering society rebuild their identity and rediscover their own voice. Son espacios, sobre todo, de, de, de acompañamiento, de reflexión, de, de, de pensar los vínculos, de de reconstrucción de, de la identidad. Buenas tardes, soy Liliana. Eh, ustedes saben que no siempre fui así. Creo que hace unos años ni loca hubiera agarrado un micrófono para hablar acá. Y creo que eso tiene que ver con la escritura. María Medrano is honored for using their work in literature to help tackle the root causes of mass incarceration. Creo que todos esas, esos objetivos más grandes que nos proponemos, que es transformar nuestras vidas, hacernos vidas más vivibles. Hassan Darsi, Morocco. Visual artist Hassan Darsi is synonymous with creating art that brings people together. C'est ça le plus important, c'est quand l'œuvre devient un lieu de débat, devient un champ de débat et non pas juste une œuvre d'art. Oui, c'est une œuvre d'art, mais l'œuvre d'art, pour moi, en tout cas, elle engage. Using public spaces to highlight economic inequality and Morocco's limited freedom of expression, Darcy draws on the creativity of artists, urban activists, neighborhood residents, and city officials to use urban spaces as a canvas. Toutes les questions d'échelle, comment on réfléchit, comment on vit, comment on pense, comment on se projette, comment on s'engage, comment on décide. Hailing from Casablanca, he has mobilized the community around him by identifying, creating and sharing tools of agency through his projects. J'imagine que de conduire des projets, de laisser des messages, de transmettre des choses aux générations futures, de dire aussi, de décliner aussi les possibles, parce que c'est possible, c'est toujours possible de changer des choses, de transformer des choses, en tout cas de, de dire oui, c'est possible. Radically rethinking the utility and beauty of abandoned spaces, Darcy's work is inspiring and empowering future generations by democratizing art and culture in his city and beyond.
Ayuton Krenak, Brazil. Indigenous leader, environmentalist, philosopher, poet, writer. Ayuton Alves Lacerda Krenak is best known for his vital contribution and support to indigenous movements in Brazil. Eu acho que fundamentalmente eu sou um ativista por direitos humanos e um defensor intransigente do direito dos povos nativos estarem vivendo ao mesmo tempo que todos os outros. Considered one of the great leaders and change makers in protecting native communities, his work has transcended local audiences, gaining widespread recognition while challenging academic conventions with innovative new philosophies and critical thinking. Se leiloar o interesse do povo indígena, porque o povo indígena não tem dinheiro para fazer lobby, porque o povo indígena não tem representante no Congresso. Então nós temos que estar aqui presentes, os parentes têm que estar aqui pintados de urucum mesmo, têm que estar aqui com as pernas na cabeça para mostrar que é um povo originário daqui, que é um povo que é filho dessa terra e que tem o direito de viver aqui. E é isso que nós viemos dizer hoje ao Congresso Nacional, aos parlamentares que estão aí. Espero que eles tenham ouvido. O povo indígena tem regado com sangue cada hectare dos 8 milhões de quilômetros quadrados do Brasil. Os senhores são testemunhas disso. Nós queremos ser respeitados na nossa identidade e que o povo indígena continue sendo índio, que os meus tataranetos possam sentar aqui e falar eu sou Krenak e contar a história dos seus antepassados com orgulho. É por isso que eu sei a emergência de falar do meu povo e defender o caminho da tradição do meu povo. Porque nós quase que acabamos. With an unerring dedication, Krenak's work creates bridges between indigenous minorities and the rest of Brazilian society by promoting certified facts, crucial to building respect between communities, highlighting climate injustice, and creating a more sustainable world. We need to be capaz de restaurar, junto com o organismo vivo da terra, a nossa fé, a nossa capacidade de viver num mundo onde a vida seja bela, seja bom viver. Those films are bringing us to the moment that we all uh, came together here for. So I would like to please invite uh, Your Royal Highness uh, Prince Constantine and Pablo Leon de la Barra to come on the stage to hand over the awards. Ailton Krenak for his vital contributions to indigenous and environmental movements in Brazil. Hassan Darcy for for 
his engagement. For their use of poetry as a tool of empowerment within women's prisons in Buenos Aires, Maria Medrano. For creating access to film production in Senegal, allowing a new generation to tell their own stories, Alain Gomis. For her groundbreaking community work, resignifying built heritage in Cairo, May Al Ibrashi. <laughs> For his artistic practice and tireless fight for freedom of expression in Cuba. Unfortunately, Luis has been deprived of his freedom and it, was, and it is not allowed to be with us today. Here to receive his award is Cuban American fellow artist and writer Coco Fusco. Your Majesties, ladies and gentlemen, Prince Klaus Fund family, the 2022 Prince Klaus Impact Award awardees.
This is Uwuru, land of commerce, culture, and tradition, Uwuru, where battles have been fought, lost, and won. Welcome to Uwuru. From Jagaban base to power base, we day peaceful. But if you like trouble, we go show you Chris. Sitting right in the heart of Lagos, Oworo holds the mainland and the island together. Ian Oworo, the most popular bus stop in Lagos. They say Johnny makes a person wise, but Oworo makes a person wiser. You might want to ask, what does it mean to come from Oworo? Oworo, not that woman where they sell a cara for Olo Jojo. Oworo, now that boy where they help him, Mama Sela can move for Miyaki Road. Oworo, now Papa Field. If you know be good player, one my bench, yeah, it done. What like my change, yeah, Oworo, long baby. Welcome to Oworo.
Wasn't that amazing? I can imagine that you all would like to stand up and start dancing. But just one thing, don't try this at home, at least not all of it. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The last performance by Valu and the Afro-Communal Offering brings us to the end of the 2022 Prince Klaus Fund Awards Ceremony. I think you will all agree it's been an inspiring evening. Not just because these awards recipients are making a real difference in their own societies, but because they are proof that there are positive developments in all parts of the world happening through culture and because their work encourages and empowers others to make, the, to, make, to make their voices heard. Marcus was already referring to it. We are now celebrating the achievements of the 2022 awardees, but we also had awardees in 2020. And I would just would like to ask them to stand up uh, because um, they didn't have the opportunity due, due to the COVID restrictions to be celebrated in the way that we know. So, Thank you. As Marcus said at the beginning, it's a pleasure to be together, and we'll have more time in a few moments at the reception to meet and greet each other. On behalf of the Prince Klaus uh, Board and staff, I'd like to thank their Majesties for their hospitality today, especially on this particular day when their daughter, Princess Amalia, has her 19th birthday. Princess Amalia, congratulations, gefeliciteerd. Our thanks also go to the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the National Postcode Lottery, to Amsterdam Luxury Hotels and KLM for bringing our awardees here and making them feel at home, and to all the other donors, supporters and partners who make our work and the transformative work of, of our award winners possible. I think you'll all agree it's work that's worth doing. Last but not least, we'd like to thank Diamantina Arquares, our 2020 Prince Claus Laureate, you already saw her standing there, whose conscious fascist brand Amor Real designed this year's goodie bags. There's one for each of you as you leave the hall. In them, you'll find this year's Impact Awards book designed by Irma Bohm and the booklet with all our 2022 seed awardees. Ladies and gentlemen, Please remain in place while the royal family leaves the hall. Once they have exited the hall, kindly stand at the sides in the back of the hall and while chairs are cleared away to make space for the reception. I wish you all a very pleasant reception. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.